Chris for allowing me the opportunity to present a, a short video at your Rethinking ICT conference. Just let me apologise for saying I couldn't be there today. I really, really wanted to go, but what with all the things that are happening in school and this kind of stuff, I just couldn't make it work. So I, I'm following the debate, I'm watching online, seeing what's happening, but um, sorry about that. There are three thoughts that I'd like to share with you today. Uh, I want to, first is about minding the gap how, and how we fill that gap. Second one is, I think I've got a powerful paradigm in terms of traffic lights, see if, see if you can buy into that. And the third thing is, I've been looking into my crystal ball and I've got some predictions for what the future might look like and perhaps start to get some of what that might be. So the first thought I want to share with you is about minding the gap. So Michael Gove has done this thing recently where he says, oh, well, you don't have to change the curriculum necessarily from September, or, 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 or has he? But we do feel now that we've got another two years plus to before whatever this curriculum is going to look like is going to be available. I wonder if when we get to 2014, will we find out that, oh, we've got another two years, and um, possibly a new Secretary of State for Education. That'd be fantastic if that happened, but let's see. So, one thing I would say, in this, this, this gap, this is just rich for opportunities that need picking. In a way, I feel almost like some of my ancestors might have done when they first arrived in America or Australia. They've got all this opportunity, they've got this field in front of them of what they're going to do, how are they going to fill it, what's it going to be about. So this is, this is really, this is not an ominous gap. This is a gap that's just rich for farming and sowing and all, you know, forget the analogies, okay. But um, one thing that's worth bearing in mind is how, in what way are you going to find out how to fill that gap? And many of you will, be, will work in institutions and schools and colleges where it's perhaps you're the only one. You're the, you're the one in the middle who's, who's, who's having to worry and, and, and think and plan about what's going to happen. But you're not on your own because you've got some very powerful allies. Without going through a whole list of what they are, there is one that I'd like to make particular mention for, and of course, that's computing in school. Um, there are loads of people here who can tell you all about what computing in school does and what it offers. And even not in the room, there's, there's at least another 30 people around the country with t-shirts like this organising events and like hubs and they will, they will welcome you with open arms, they won't pass any judgement, they'll want to hear what you're doing and want to share it and, and offer advice. It is, it is a fantastic way of getting engaged and thinking about how to take things forward. Yeah. Personally, some of the things that I've been involved with with things like hack days and events where we get community, the whole community into our school. And I mean, children that don't go to our school, parents and grandparents, uncles, aunts, teachers from other schools, families from other towns, people who, who don't even live in Preston, but they work down in Cambridge or in London or in Carlisle, and they'll come in. And if you want to know how to get that sort of buzz and all that thriving in your school, Get in touch with me, and, um, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll tell you, I'll share with you some of how you can make that happen. Things like Raspberry Jam, you know, the, the simplest things to work up, but and so successful, make things happen. So, in summary, in terms of minding the gap, um, I'm just thinking of it. There was a talk this morning here. Guy Claxton was quoting Goethe when he said, "Whatever you dream, you can do." And the quote goes on much longer than that, but it's do it. So my second thought for today is to share with you my paradigm of traffic lights and, 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 and see how you understand and interpret that. So there was a talk here yesterday, which I got to introduce, Ian Livingston, and it's, it's definitely the most fascinating and interesting talk that he's given to date, where he's reflecting on where we've come the last 12 months since the Next Gen report. And Simon Peter Jones did something similar at the Computer in School conference, which was one of his keynotes. If you weren't there, please go find it, listen it, Leon recorded the thing, you can see that there. So, traffic lights. At the end of uh, Ian Livingston's talk, there were people in the room going, but, but, but I, 
I'm an ICT teacher, what should I be doing? Am I supposed to be doing from September? Do I wait? Do I still teach PowerPoint? They were full of questions. And, and the way I summarized it was by saying, well, you, you've got three routes now you can choose. You're at the traffic lights. Are you seeing those traffic lights as being red or amber? Or are you seeing them as being green? If you're seeing them as being red, what you're probably going to do for the next three years will be nothing different from what you're doing now. But please, get ready to move off red. Because, so the rest of us can get through. If you're on amber, you're probably seeing the traffic lights as amber because you've already started to hear some of these things. You've got excited by some of these things and what they are. And you think, well, maybe I'd like to try some of that in my school. And maybe I'll do something small and then it'll get bigger and bigger. And amber is a really good place to be. But of course, the best place to be is to be on the green light and to see the traffic lights are being green. To see that Michael Gold is there smiling, saying, do it. Just make it happen in your school. Whatever you can dream, you can do. People on green lights, well, there's lots of them in the room. And if you go around after, in the break, at lunch, ask people, what light are you on? Because there'll be lots of people there at your Rethink and ICT conference who are on green. They've had fantastic success. They're blogging about it. They're sharing it. They're talking about it. Things are happening. This is what the future curriculum is going to look like. And these are the people that you need to be talking to to find out so that you can go, quickly go from red through to amber to green. Please, if you're seeing that you're stuck on the red light and you don't know where to go, stop looking for barriers. Stop seeing obstacles. Don't say, oh, I'm not sure what senior leadership would say, or I don't know where I'm going to get money from, or how can we make that work in our school? Because you just need to dream about these things. And, and even if you can't dream, there are people in the room who have dreams that are making it happen. Find out from them. Engage with these people. They are powerful allies. And, um, gosh, it sounds like I'm giving a political broadcast. Well, perhaps I am. My, th my third thought, this is, this is a little bit more risky. I've been looking into my crystal ball and um, I had a good conversation yesterday here at the Festival of Education with Conrad Wolfram about the future of the maths curriculum. Why maths? Well, because I think, looking into my crystal ball, I wonder if in the next two years our colleagues who teach maths in schools will be finding themselves in the same position we found ourselves in a year ago. They're going to see how our children are engaged and passionate, enthusiastic about what they're learning in ICT computing lessons, and they're going to start to realise that things like quadratic equations and simultaneous equations and teaching long division, are, children, are they useful skills, concepts and attitudes that children should be learning? My prediction is that in the, in the next two years, just as in the real world, we're going to see a massive convergence between the maths curriculum and the computing curriculum. And if you haven't seen that already, talk to, talk to people and you'll see, you'll hear conversations in staff rooms. When you just say, ask a maths teacher, you teach simultaneous equations? Why? And just see what kind of response you get. But I, my own experience at school was, I had teachers saying to my parents, the parents said, oh, that's fantastic, you're talented at maths, it just doesn't apply himself. Well, my mum said, why? It's boring, I don't get anything out of maths, I don't really see the point of it. When, when am I ever going to use differential calculus in the future? Who here in the room uses differential calculus? Okay, one or two of you, but it's not a tremendously useful skill. Oh, okay, so anyway, point made. So, I think, oh sorry, but in my own um, situation, my own experience, what I found was as soon as I started recently to, to teach myself programming again, I started to think, oh my goodness, maths is the way that we understand the world. Maths is the means by which we, we model, we understand weather, uh, behaviour, statistics. Maths is the means, is, is, is the way that we do it. Computing, programming is, is, is the way in which we do it. Well, hang on, I've just repeated myself. Because there's going to be this massive convergence. Now, I've shared with you three thoughts. Please don't let the conversation end there. Please let's continue this discussion. And I'm sorry I couldn't be there, but if you want to carry on the conversation, as I said already, I'm on Twitter, at TechnoTeacher, T-E-K-N-O Teacher. T -E -K -N -O -teacher. Uh, you can email me if you want. 
Alan at oldunamu.org.uk and um, of course I've got lots of things I want to share with people on my blog and I'm not greedy, take them, say it's your own idea, teachcomputing.wordpress.com. Have a great con uh, conference when you're rethinking ICT and please carry on the discussion and find out who's on green light, who's on amber, who's on red.